Hello, my name is Richard Henry and I'm here to show you some tips and tricks on how to play the bass trombone. I'm a bass trombonist and this is what I play. Coming up, I'm going to tell you a few little secrets that can help you on your journey to get started or to continue on your playing experience. What do I love about the bass trombone? I love it because it's such a versatile instrument. It's got a beautiful sound. It can have a harsh sound, loud, quiet sound. Let's explore some of those sounds. So, trombone, it can play long notes. <laughs> And it can play in orchestras, in jazz bands, in pop music, yeah, brass bands, trombone or the bass trombone, as I say, is really, really versatile. Hi again. So here we have my trombone or my trombone case. And it's very important that any trombone case that you have, what you need to notice is that the top half is about half the size as the bottom. So we've got two thirds here and one third here. Basically, this is the bottom of the case, that's the top of the case. Seems obvious, yeah? However, if you open it the wrong way around, the instruments may well fall out, so it's important to have it the right way up. Also, to give you a clue, is we have the locks, and you can see the locks open from the bottom. So I'm gonna open up my trombone, and show my trombone case, and show you what's inside. There might be a lock in the back as well, so make sure you open all of them. And here we have, trombone case okay so it's in two sides on this side is a trombone slide and on this side is the bell section um, mine's got some nice velvet in there to hold it in place yours might just have little clips that you need to clip it out on so the first thing we need to do is to take out the uh, trombone slide okay now take it out very carefully because as you know it's made of metal and if this gets bashed or dented you're gonna to have to take it back to the shop to get it repaired. So try not to knock this part of the section, okay? You'll also notice is one side extends further. That's the important side. Hold this bit with your right hand and hold the longest bit towards you. That's very important when you come to putting the bell section on. Now, here we have the bell section. Instead of holding it by the bell itself, maybe hold it by this side, the opposite side to that. And as you can see what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna hold my slide or rest it on the floor like so. I hope you can see it on the camera. And then I'm gonna place the bell section. It should receive on the longer part of the trombone slide. Then you just need to gently maneuver it into position almost like a right angle, like so. Once you've done that, you've got a little thing you can screw on to tighten it up. You don't need to over tighten it, but just enough so it's secure. And you can just check it there, like that. And that's how you put the trombone together. Now we've got our instrument set up. The third most important part of the, of the instrument is the mouthpiece, okay? We've got the slide, and we've got the bell section. The mouthpiece is the receiver, or you put it to your lips and that's where you blow air through it. 
I talked about hints and tips for the trombone, and I'm going to give you one really important tip now, and this is to do with the slide. I've taken the slide off the bell, as you can see. Now, if you look closely, all trombone slides have what we call a trombone lock or a slide lock. It's a little sort of L-shaped uh, metal piece, and it locks the slide so it doesn't move. Okay? This lock is really important because guess what? If the lock comes off, the slide's going to shoot off and it will break. It will get dented. And we don't want that to happen because guess what? Yeah, that's right. You've got to go all the way back to the shop to get it repaired. So you need to really, really look after this section. It's the most delicate part of the trombone. So with the lock on, let's just talk about how you hold the slide. Okay, you can see this little rectangular window here. Now, what I do is I generally put my, my little finger, that finger and that finger, I put these three fingers in this sort of rectangle, like that. My pointy finger, I generally use that to balance the slide and I place that either on top of the slide or the actual mouthpiece there. So it's a bit like that. And you can see my thumb is pointing up. When I put the bell section on, there's a little crossbar that I can hold and balance the trombone with my thumb. The next important thing that you need to do is, as a general rule, when I'm walking around with my instrument, I put my little finger underneath the rectangular square. Do you know why I do this? Can you think why I'm doing this? It's a double safety measure that if the slide lock wasn't on, my little pinky would be catching the slide and it wouldn't drop and break. So remember, always keep the slide lock on, keep your little pinky finger underneath the, the second slide brace here to keep it in place, just in case the lock isn't on or it comes off accidentally. And that way you'll keep safe. So, pinky holding the slide, two fingers in the rectangle, the forefinger balancing, and the thumb is on the trigger here. Now, when I take my pink, when I've got my right hand on the slide, I put my three fingers inside there, and I'm holding the slide. How do I hold the slide? I hold the slide with my right hand, and I'm gonna use two, two fingers and thumb, like that. I'm gonna put two fingers underneath the, the, uh, the, the slide brace there, and my thumb at the top. And that way, I've got flexibility. And remember, we need that flexibility because when you're going out to fifth and sixth position, you need to extend your wrist. Let me show you how not to hold it. Now, some people sometimes hold it with their fist. Um, they hold it in the wrong part. They hold it where their fingers are so extended, it hits the belt. This is really, really dangerous because you will trap your fingers between the slide and the bell and you don't want that. Also, um, make sure you've got, you've got the, uh, the outer slide, which is the bit that moves up and down. And then the silver bit of the slide is called the inner slide. Make sure your little pinky doesn't rest on the inner slide because again, Guess what? When you move the slide, you will trap your finger inside there. And again, it's a ooh, ouch moment. It's very painful. I used to do that. Well, I did it once, not done it again, because it is really painful. So just be careful. So just to recap, your little pinky goes around there and your fingers around the slide. Two fingers and thumb hold that. Your wrist is free to move. If you had a fist and you did like this, you're going to bang your knuckles and also you're only going to get out to about fifth position and no more. So you need to hold it with your fingers and your thumb down there. Great. So with brass instruments, indeed woodwind instruments as well, you need to blow air. That's how you're going to get a sound. Now what I do is I purse my lips together a bit like this. So not too tense and not too flabby. I don't want to go like that. And I don't want to be really tense, just something in between. 
Um, think about maybe whistling or that sort of thing, not a, a pucker, but just a gentle and blow air. Sometimes when people do this, they make a buzz sound. <laughs> Sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? But you don't necessarily need to make that sound. As long as air is coming through and you've got a small little hole where the air goes through and, um, and, and the air's flowing through nicely, um, that should be enough to make a sound. So let's try that with our mouthpiece in the instrument. And let's just see if we can make a sound. A little tip, okay? When you're doing this, maybe play this video back and hear the sound I make and try to match that pitch. So we've got high pitches and low pitches. I want you to try and match the pitch that I'm gonna make. So this is what most people might make when they, when they blow. Might be that pitch. Some people get this note. Yeah, so you can get either one of those two notes. If you get one of those two notes, that's a great start. If you're lucky, you can also get this note. So there are your three basic notes when you first pick up the instrument that you might make without moving the slide. Keep the slide blocked, okay? As long as you've got one of those notes, we can work with that and we can move on to the next stage. Let's talk about tonguing. Now, because the trombone has the unique slide, which just makes continuous notes, so on, um, we have to interrupt the, that long note, if you like, with the tongue. So we're playing shorter notes. And the way I do that is, as I say, by using my tongue. Now, we have a continuous airflow. We talked about this earlier, where we're pursing the lips together and the air is coming through steady, a steady stream. Now, what I do with my tongue, think about your tongue like a snake, or let's say a curious cobra, where the cobra's head darts forward and back again. Like this, this is the action of the tongue. And I'm using the tip of my tongue, or at least a flat part at the, at the end of the tongue, there. And I'm not tonguing, I'm not putting my tongue between my lips. I'm making sure the tip of the tongue, as I say, or the flat of the top of the tongue, hits the back of my teeth. Let's just try one. With me, I'll count one, two, three, four, play. So on the four, you breathe. One, two, three, Keep your instrument in place, ready to play, and I'll go. Mm, mm, mm. Great, I hope you're getting the hang of that. Let's just try that again a few more times with me. And the next stage is to tell you how you play different notes on the trombone because there are no vowels, it's just a slide. So what it is, although you can't really see this on the camera, you have to imagine that there are seven different positions along the slide. In other words, this whole slide, I'll go back, I imagine it to be divided into seven different positions. So the first position is when it can't go any further, that's in first position. First position, like that. Then the next position is somewhere between, you can see where the bell is here, and first position. You can also see the top of the slide, which is, I'll take the slide off, which is this part, the protruding part of the slide. If you imagine that there, Try not to take the slide off as well, by the way, at home, because it might drop and then you'd be in real trouble because it would be broken. But the top of that slide, it's about, what, I'd say about uh, an inch and a half, something like that, maybe what side in centimetres. It's about three and a half centimetres from first position. That's second position. Then the bar that you're holding, when that's in line with the bell, 
that is third position. And then back to the top of the slide, when that's in line with the bell, that is fourth position. And then I'm gonna skip fifth for now, but if you gently just move your arm without stretching it, that will be sixth position. So between sixth position and the bell in fourth is fifth position, about equidistance. And then the longest position is seventh, seventh position. Now this one, you have to have really flexible wrist because instead of holding it really rigidly, you need to extend your wrist like that. If you hold your wrist like this, you won't make seven position, you need to extend. So let's see that with the slide. So as I hold the slide out, I extend to seventh, and you can see I'm touching the bar with my fingertips and I bring it back in and I can get up there like that. So positions one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's hear how that sounds. I'm gonna start on this note. That's the seven positions. Now, that's only one set of notes. And this one, then the concept behind the next thing I'm gonna talk about is a little bit weird, but if you can imagine all those seven positions, in each of those positions, if you think vertically, we can get higher pitches. So in first position, I can get several notes. Listen. And the same in second position. And third position. And so on. Let's see if we can put the two together now where we're tonguing separate notes and we're going to use a combination of slide positions. So remember I talked about the seven slide positions. We're going to use position number one, position number two, position number four, which is in line with the bell, and position number six, which is your arm extended. Not all the way with the wrist, that's seventh, but just enough there in six. Let's see how that sounds. I'll demonstrate it first. So just listen. Yeah, okay. So we had one, two, four, and six. Again with me. One, two, three, four. Good. I hope you've got that. Rewind the video back and, uh, and, and see if we can really get that even better. Well done. So I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, tour of the bass trombone, of how it looks, how it sounds, and a few hints and tips on uh, helping you in your journey, your musical journey of the instrument. And hopefully look forward to seeing you again sometime in the future. Take care. Uh -huh.